Hey, I'm Lana from Lana Glow Shot Art, and in this video, we'll be unboxing the March 2024 sketch box. This box has tons of fun green art supplies in it, and I'm gonna show you how to use them together and how to create volume. Ready? Let's go. The surface in this month's box is the Hanamule Manga layout and illustration paper. There are 20 sheets of fairly thin paper in here that are perfect for working with alcohol markers. They're coated on the back, so there's absolutely no bleed through. We also have two Acrylograph Archer and Olive pens in Shroom and Artichoke. I recommend shaking up your pen and activating the nib at the beginning of every drawing session. These pens are especially great at bold graphic lines, and if you want to build up more value, I recommend cross-hatching. That is drawing lines in a variety of different directions to build up density. It's also really fun to play around with stippling gradients with these pens as well. The very first time you use one of these pens, you want to shake it for about 60 seconds and then activate the nib by pressing it down into the paper. Wait for the paint to run and then you're ready to go. When your drawing session is complete, remember to clean off your nib so that the paint doesn't dry and clog your pen. One of my very favorite things to do with these pens is some stream of conscious doodling. I love that the lines are really permanent and that they're bold even if I'm not pressing all that hard. And that helps me stay really present and in the moment and work with whatever comes down onto the page. If I make a mistake, I just adjust and adapt it and make it work rather than erasing and overthinking it too much. Together, let's create a page of little fun doodles that remind you of spring. Here I have a watering can with flowers, some blooming tulips, a nest with eggs in it, a kite, a variety of different leaves and fresh new plants. Use these two gorgeous contrasting colors to create a full spread of doodles. And don't overthink this too much. Keep it light and playful and encourage your creative juices to run wild. Next up, we have three Copic Chow markers in New Leaf, Moss, and Olive. These are double-sided markers, and here I'm using the chisel tip to lay in a block of color. I love the way that these markers just slide across the surface of this paper. This slick paper holds all of your alcohol marker on the top, so it's not seeping in and getting used up in the tooth of the paper. That means that your markers are gonna last a long time on this paper. These markers also have a wonderful brush tip that allows you to make a variety of expressive marks. Using these three markers, let's create a gradient. Start with the olive and build up color on the lower third. You will layer more towards the bottom so that you're concentrating that color darkest at the edge. Then we'll transition to the moss marker. Fill in the middle third evenly and then concentrate more layers towards the center, feathering it off in either direction. Lastly, we'll transition to the new leaf. Fill in the top third of this gradient with your new leaf and layer more material towards the top. You can go over your layers as much as you would like to, but one characteristic of this paper is that your markers are not going to blend a ton. You're going to rely more on the opacity to create the gradient. Next, we have the Holbein colored pencil set. There are three colors, lamp black, fur green, and white. Whenever you layer colored pencils, be sure to do this in thin layers and allow for even coverage to build up slowly. You can also play around with gradients by easing off the pressure as you move in towards the lighter values. The Holbein colored pencils have a really slick consistency that glides across the surface of this paper, which offers rich, consistent pigment with exceptional coverage. And the white can be used to burnish these colors by adding lots of pressure and blending the black and the fur green, making them lighter tints. This pencil is going to work really well to lay in a light sketch for our marker drawings, and it's also great at showing volume. We're going to illustrate volume. Let's start with a sketch of a watering can and get all of those proportions laid in really lightly first. Now, shading is one way to illustrate volume, but another way is cross contour. Cross contour refers to the direction of the mark that we're laying over our object. Here I am creating really rounded cylindrical marks that are wrapping around the body of the watering can. That creates a three-dimensional illusion and allows us to build up tons of volume without relying too much on shading. 
Notice that when I start drawing this egg, I do lay in about where the shadow will be, but rather than adding all of the different gradients, I just lay in a curved mark that shows the wrapping, rounding sensation of the sphere. And then I contrast this with a really flat horizontal mark for the shadow. Now it's time to put all these materials and skills together and we're going to sketch a pear. Start with your fur green colored pencil and lay in the basic proportions of the pear so that you know where it sits on the page. Keep it light so that if you need to make adjustments, it's easy to do so. Now, using the lightest marker, the new leaf, lay in a solid layer of color over the entire area with the exception of those light, bright highlights. We are not going to be able to go all the way back to white, so keep the white of the paper available. Next, we'll transition to the middle green and we'll lay in the shadows a little bit heavier towards the right side. Notice that I am using a rounded mark or a cross contour mark that's showing volume, and I'm emphasizing these with the olive green. After all of the marker is laid in and dry, I'm going to use my lamp black and fur green colored pencils, and I'm going to emphasize the cross contour mark. I'm using a wrapping line to show the three-dimensional volume of the pair. And now it's finally time to play around with this glorious white colored pencil. This is a premier colored pencil that lays right over the top of your marker and is able to heighten the value. Last but not least, I'm using those Acrylograph pens to add a little bit more volume and to add the texture on top of the pair. The prompt this month is succulent, and this is the perfect subject to illustrate what these materials are capable of. Start with a sketch of a succulent. I am using a photo reference that I took on vacation. You can use this photo reference for your sketch, or I empower you to go out and take some of your own photographs of plants and images that you're interested in drawing. Once you have a basic layout completed, I go over my layout again just to make sure that everything is on point. And then I'm filling the entire surface in with the lightest marker. Whenever possible, I'm using the direction of my mark to help enhance the volume. After that base layer is completed with the new leaf marker, I switch over to the moss marker and I map in all of my shadows. Yes, there are some shadows that are darker than others, but I'm going to deal with that later and I'm just going to focus on mapping in every shadow that I see. When there is a softer edge to that shadow, I'm feathering the edge with the brush tip of my marker so that I have a smoother transition. But these don't have to be perfectly smooth because I'm going to use the colored pencils later to round out some of these edges. Once that is completed and I have a good sense of volume and shadow on the surface of the succulent, I'm coming in with olive and I'm darkening the value of the background so that the succulent really stands out. Now I transition to using the colored pencils to soften the edges and to build up more detail. I start with the fur green and I use that cross contour mark in combination with gradients to smooth out the transition from that moss marker to the new leaf marker. I move all around my work and I use the fur green on almost every single one of these petals or leaves before I move on to the black and the white. The white is used to heighten the value and and to really emphasize the highlights. It can also be used to smooth out transitions as well because all of the Holbein colored pencils have this really smooth consistency that is great for building up coverage. And I love using the black to really add more contrast to the background. I am going for a really dark, rich background, but because it's layered on top of the olive, it has a really nice sense of depth. I'm also using the lamp black colored pencil to emphasize some of the shadows a little bit more. And again, I'm using those scooping and wrapping lines or cross contour lines to add a little bit more volume. When the color pencil is pretty much done, I transition to the acrylograph pens, and these are great for adding a little bit more emphasis as well. Notice that I'm continuing to use those wrapping marks, and every time I use this, it's adding more dimension and more volume to my work. And now this piece is complete. I hope you learned a ton about working with these materials and adding volume to your drawings, and we can't wait to see what you create. So be sure to use the hashtag SketchboxMarch when you post your work online. 
For more unboxing videos and tutorials, you can check out our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.